You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. People, what's happening? Kenan here, it's another Saturday morning and you'd think I'd fix the shutter by now. Anyway, it's another beautiful, well, tolerable day in Florida. It's gonna rain a little bit, but um, it's time for Ask Camp Kenan. That's what we're doing here today. Uh, love these questions, love that you guys keep sending them on over and I love to take the time to kinda hang with you every Saturday morning and get you uh, some questions answered. Uh, so this question, I really like this one. Uh, this question comes from Mary Lynn Brown, and Mary asks, do female tortoises show male tendencies? Specifically, a show of trying to breed. Very, very interesting question. Um, we're gonna dive right into it. We're here with some sulcata tortoises. There is a female right there. Uh, there are the two males that I have in here, along with the female on the right. Uh, with sulcata tortoises, I suppose the question or the answer to your question is sometimes. That's right. Sometimes females will mount males, but it's more of a dominance thing. Uh, it's just, you know, you got to also take into consideration our human uh, biology and human behavior. Uh, this is my biggest gal. Here she is right now. She has laid two clutches of eggs already this year. And she is a bruiser. She's about 120 pounds. And in addition to protecting her nest, which she sometimes rams me when I'm going over towards the area where she laid, or if I start to dig, she'll ram me, which you normally uh, wouldn't expect in a tortoise. The, by all accounts, most people say they don't protect their nests. I have uh, disproven that, at least in sulcatas. And I know that the... Um, Mountain tortoise build and protect their nests as well. I'm sure it is also uh, common in other species. But with the sulcata, she actually protects her nest, which you would think, well, she's ramming me. That's more like a male thing. Uh, but I've also seen females ram each other. And they'll ram each other for nesting sites. Sometimes another female is nesting too close to an older nest that a female laid and she'll go ahead and push the other one out of the way while she's actually in the process of depositing her eggs. Which is a bummer because when that happens, they'll, the female that's been depositing the eggs will step on them and crush them. Uh, so this is like one way of trying to ensure they have the best nesting areas and also that their DNA survives. At least that's what I believe. Uh, also, you know, this is happening in a captive situation. Uh, in the wild, they'd have far more areas to choose uh, where to lay their eggs. But that's one male tendency. And again, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes you'll see tortoises, females, that will mount other females and or males, and that is a display. And as I was saying earlier, sometimes you got some gals that bully their guys around, and that even happens in human beings. Some males are just more passive and more beta, and other females are just more alpha. Uh, it's just the way it goes. Uh, but I'm now gonna move over to the cherry heads because you were talking about male tendencies as far as behavior. But I wanna show you something really cool uh, with some of their actual biology and uh, their appearance. So as we know, most male turtles and tortoises, or rather tortoises and uh, terrestrial turtles, like the box turtles, will have some characteristics that you can do some sexual dimorphism. And that is the ability to tell which is male and female. And there is Darth Maul. So what I'm gonna do is shut this. I didn't realize she was so close to the opening. Now I'm gonna pull out Darth Maul because she's special. And cherry heads in general, uh, they're kind of a subspecies of redfoot tortoise. They're kind of like a locale. I don't know if any work is being done to elevate these animals uh, to their own species status, but as we know, cherry heads generally stay smaller, generally, and look at this large female as it makes a liar out of me, um, but they always keep that red head. And then of course, what about Darth Maul's beautiful eyes? What a beautiful tortoise. So when I first got this tortoise, many, many, many years ago, she was dropped off to me. The woman who dropped her off told me she was a male. 
because I'm gonna flip her over just for a moment. I wanna show you guys. Uh, you see the concavity in her plastron there? That is a male characteristic, as is the fact that her tail is a quite a bit longer than most redfoot tortoises. So what I did not realize at the time is that in the subspecies, or rather these locale, the cherry head tortoise, their females will have male physical characteristics like that concavity in the plastron and the longer tail. The only reason I found out this was a female was I happened along her laying eggs one day. And then I did a little more research and found out just what I told you is the truth about cherry heads. Uh, here's a little male cherry head, but now when we look at the male, a true male, look at how much more concave that is. You can really see the curve. And then of course, look at the length of that tail as we get closer. But again, as far as redfoots are concerned, that looks like a male redfoot, the female cherry head. So it was really, really amazing. Uh, it was a little interesting. Here's another female. This one doesn't really have too much concavity. You see, it's a little bit concave. Uh, but again, it just shows you that they have some male characteristics, that it's not all the same. Here's a male, you can see, concavity, okay? But it's really concaved. So you gotta really know what you're looking for. Uh, out of this species of tortoise, I've never seen the females mounting the males um, or females mounting females. That tends to happen more in sulcatas because they seem to be more territorial and more, uh, they display more of a dominance when they are kept in groups. So uh, I don't see any of that phenomenon happening here, uh, but it is pretty amazing. And I just thought this was such an interesting question to deal with because tortoises, uh, they keep on teaching us, you know, you never know everything. And that's what excites me about doing the YouTube channel and about working with reptiles in general. There's always something new to learn. And that's why I love passing this along to you guys. So that is pretty much the question for today. Uh, it's a little bit of a shorter one, but we learned something and we learned that yes, indeed, these animals can have some male tendencies, and that happens all across the animal kingdom. If you look at seahorse, it's the males that actually hold on to the babies uh, in their own pouch and protect them. So there are many different uh, examples of males uh, taking on a role that is traditionally a female role. And look at this. Oh, I don't know if this one's ramming me or not, but <laughs> pushing up against me, I think they're looking for some food. So this is a really cool question and so interesting because what are the roles? Uh, I think they change um, species to species and even culture to culture in human beings. So there you have it. Uh, very interesting stuff and uh, it's fun to kind of figure out what's happening with these animals because who knows, maybe it'll shed some more light onto what's happening to us as a species of organism on this planet. All right, there you go. Thanks so much. Appreciate your questions out there. Thanks guys for watching. And uh, don't forget to go to patreon.com slash camp cannon if you'd like to know more about these amazing animals we share our world with. And uh, there you go. All right, everybody, thanks. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will talk to you all real soon. For uh, the tortoises, I'm Kenan, and I'm saying you better have a nice weekend or day, wherever you may be. See you soon. Uh, 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 we got this. <laughs> I'm totally, I'm totally.